Next talk is the tips on management of congenital cataract. Dr. Kalpana Narendran wants to speak. Unfortunately, he is busy and uh, we have a very able and competent replacement with one of our uh, co-faculty, Dr. Sasikala Elizabeth from uh, the Armandai Hospital Coimbatore. So Dr. Sasikala, if you could share screen and start your talk, please. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Sir, is my uh, slide visible? Yes, go on. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening to all. Uh, thank you to AIOC and our post. Dr. Kalpana Narendran sends her apology. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Rohit sir, for this opportunity. I'm in fact uh, fortunate to share this session amidst the stalwarts of pediatric ophthalmology. I hope I'll be able to add some useful information to the viewers too. The global prevalence of congenital cataract is estimated to be 4.2 per 10,000 children. Just a minute, let me reduce my screen. Yes. And management of congenital cataract remains a challenging entity to the ophthalmologist. It's a rapidly changing field and requires a lifelong learning process. Cataract management per se in children is state of the art. So the next nine minutes, I would uh, take you through various as aspects of pediatric cataract in regard to evaluation, decision making, timing of cataract surgery, biometry, tips in performing uh, surgeries, and also how to handle in difficult situations and handling challenging situations. So about etiology, in, a, in nearly 50% of uh, cases, the etiology is unknown in children. And it is hereditary in around 8.3 to 25% of cases in children less than one year of age. So an ocular examination, we need to remember to perform in the family members, the parents and the siblings to identify any undiagnosed lens opacities. So while evaluating the child, definitely attention has to be paid about the fixation behavior and preferential looking test that would add to the clinician a gross estimate about the vision of the child. Definitely Bruckner's test should be performed in all neonates as a screening tool to identify any cataract at birth. And any lens opacity that is centrally placed, posteriorly located, sizing more than three millimeters with a reduction in vision, decrease in contrast sensitivity, and increased glare with loss of stereo kitty qualifies for a visually significant cataract. So when to place in an IOL, what is the timing? So IOL is not recommended, intraocular lens implantation is not recommended for children less than six months of age. A survey of ASCRS members, the vast majority of the respondents waited till the children were one or three year old in bilateral cataract cases. So better these children are left aphakic in the primary surgery. IATS concluded that it did not demonstrate any visual benefit for implanting an IOL at the time of unilateral cataract surgery in infants younger than seven months of age. The in the bag placement of a single piece hydrophobic acrylic lens are ideally preferred. A three piece IOL can be placed in cases of inadvertent posterior capsular rupture. Monofocal IOL are preferred in children. Multifocal IOL in younger children is again a controversial topic. In older children, based on the surgeon's decision and case selection, multifocal IOL could be a choice. For clinician, many times there is dilemma about the decision making regarding the timing of cataract surgery. When operating on a newborn with dense unilateral cataract, as early as four to six weeks of age, the infant can be operated and bilateral cataract, which are dense, surgery can be done as early as six to eight weeks of age. Again, the decision about placing IOL, it's the surgeon's decision and it's multifactorial. Generally, the protocol for unilateral cataracts more than six months of age, IOL could be placed and bilateral cataracts more than one year of age, intraocular lens can be placed. Regarding the biometry, inaccuracy in axillant measurement can result in up to four to 14 diopters of error in the IOL power in pediatric eyes for every millimeter difference. So while performing contact A scan, the value with maximum anterior chamber depth should be chosen to offset the inadvertent indentation of the cornea. Older children, immersion A scan is considered as the gold standard method for axillant measurement. While performing biometry in children, while doing the keratometry measurements, handheld keratometer, because of the lack of fixation and centration, can result in inaccurate errors up to 1.3 diopter. So it's preferable to perform it without eye speculum and obtaining multiple readings and recording the average can avoid errors. Axillant usually 
in children less than 20 millimeters of axillant srkt and holiday 2 formulas are preferred i will formula which is best in children again it's a controversial topic in iats by wonderful et al he has shown that srkt and holiday 1 have least predictive errors in infants in older children more than two years of age with axial length less than 22 millimeters of a Q is preferred and axial length more than 22 millimeters Barrett's and SRKT formulas are preferred. Few tips on pediatric cataract uh, surgery steps. Generally, it's preferred in younger children to prefer a limbal or sclerocardial incisions. So it provides a good visualization for instrumentation. Also in older children, superior clear corneal triplanar incision can be considered. It is recommended to suture the wounds Whenever there is an wound leak, even the paracentesis openings have to be sutured in. While performing anterior capsular excess in situations like this with a white cataract and no red glow, trifan glue could be used in. Ideal size for the excess is 5 to 5.5. It should cover 0.5 to 1 millimeter of the IOL. It should be smaller than the IOL optic diameter. Many a times in this situation of an intumescent cataract, one faces a risk of runaway rexus. Always inspect the size and shape of the rexus. Whenever faced with the situation, frequently hold the capsulotomy tearing edge, re-grasp near the tearing edge, adjust the direction of the pull, use a pullback technique to rescue an extending rexus. While performing irrigation and aspiration in pediatric eyes, either we could use a go, uh, coaxial or bimanual irrigation with an handpiece. It is advisable to avoid hydro dissection in cases of posterior polar cataracts and in cases with posterior capsular dehiscence. Irrigation and aspiration can be performed by lowering the parameters. In case like this, with a pre-existing primary capsular dehiscence, better to place in a three-piece eyeball in the sulcus. So injecting a single-piece lens is, should not be attempted whenever there is a bigger anterior excess, discontinuity in the anterior excess and larger PC tear. I will can be implanted with an axial length more than 17 millimeters and whenever the corneal diameter is more than 10 millimeters. Single piece hydrophobic or a three piece I will could be placed in based on the situation. So for managing posterior capsule and anterior vitrectomy, it is generally advised to perform a posterior continuous capsular excess in all children aged less than six to eight years of age. It can be considered to be performed in children older than that whenever they have an associated nystagmus and developmental delay because they wouldn't be cooperative for a YAC capsulotomy if it's required to clear a posterior capsular pacification. The desirable size for PPC is one millimeter less than the optic size, preferably three to 3.5. Limbal approach is usually preferred. Usually it is safe to place in uh, the IOL and then perform the posterior capsular excess. As we know, the pediatric eyes are prone for more amount of inflammation post-operative period. So post-operatively topical corticosteroids, topical antibiotics, topical cycloplegic agents have to be used in any uncomplicated cataract surgeries. In the follow-up period, children should be provided glasses or contact lens. Focus should be provided to handle the amblyopia in a timely manner, especially in unilateral cases, early initiation of patching therapy, amblyopia therapy have to be done. I would just like to take you through a couple of cases in challenging situation. This is one such child with congenital cataract with congenital rubella syndrome. In this situation, it is difficult to perform an anterior capsular excess because of the elasticity of the capsule and lack of uh, anterior chamber space and pupil being smaller in size. The cataractus material, it is usually nuclear in nature and also more of powdery material. So it poses difficulty during cortical wash. The posterior capsule is also thin and degenerated. So it is difficult to perform a manual capsular, posterior capsular excess. Usually vitrectomy can be used to perform a PPC. Similarly, another child with congenital cataract with a posterior capsular plaque. In children, it is essential for us to remove as much as cortical material as possible to prevent any visual axis or pacification. So in this case, there is a dense posterior capsular plaque. The surgeon gently nibbles and peels the posterior plaque and uses one hour scissors to gently trim the edges and remove it. A three-piece IOL is placed in the back later on. A posterior continuous capsular excess is initiated and completed with utratas and the remaining of the posterior plaque is gently nibbled and removed with a one hour scissors followed by anterior vitrectomy. So to conclude, 
Cataract surgery done in the first six weeks of life in a child has better visual prognosis. Placing an in the bag IOL along with primary posterior capsulorexis and anterior vitrectomy are essential in younger group. Doing a careful post operative monitoring, recognizing posterior capsule opacification, and performing a timely management of the PCO are the key to success. The battle could still be lost if inadequate attention is paid towards amblyopia therapy. So proper amblyopia therapy, glasses, a contact lens compliance, and a proper follow-up are the biggest challenges that decides the visual outcome for a child. Thank you so much for your patient listening. These are my reference. I thank my mentor, Dr. Kalpana Narendran, for her continuous support and this opportunity.